Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Scott. Today's content is a bit different. This is about gaming. It's about Fortnite. I read an article, The Gamer, online about the best and worst chapters in Fortnite. And yes, I play Fortnite. I jump out of the battle bus, but I'm kind of a newbie. So I'm going to learn, like, what has happened? What, what do they think is the best, the worst? Um, and it's interesting. I use Google's new AI tool to come up with the conversation. So listen to this, but stay tuned to the end where I share a couple thoughts about Fortnite, maybe a good chapter and maybe the bad future for Fortnite. So stay tuned. All right, get ready because today we're going to take a deep dive into Fortnite. Ooh, exciting. You guys have been asking for it. Yes, they have. You want to know how all the chapters stack up against each other? That's right. We're going to be looking at an article from thegamer.com. Okay. And it's called Every Chapter of Fortnite Ranked. Bold. And it is bold. They have some opinions in this article. Yeah, it's a pretty strong list and it really got me thinking. Okay about how much the game has changed right. over time and how our expectations as players have changed. Yeah, like remember when it was all about building the biggest fort right. and just like outlasting everybody in the storm? Yeah, that was it. Now we've got these huge storylines, yeah. these massive events, right. these collabs that blow my mind. It's a wild evolution. And I yeah. think to like fully understand this ranking and to dive deep into these chapters, yes. we should make sure we're all on the same page about some key terms okay. yeah. that you're gonna be hearing throughout this deep dive. Um, so just really quickly, we have the Seven. Okay. They are a mysterious group of characters dedicated to protecting reality as we know it. Like the good guys. Basically. Okay. Then you have the Imagined Order. Okay. They're kind of like the shadowy organization that wants to control everything. Ooh. And then at the center of it all, yes. you have the zero point. Oh, yes, the zero point. This nexus of energy that connects realities. So that's kind of like their infinity stones. You got it. Okay. Everyone okay. wants to get their hands on it. I see, I see. Um, oh. So oh. the gamer had some spicy takes. Yeah, they were not afraid to ruffle some feathers. Not afraid at all. Okay. Um, and they put chapter five. Okay. Which is still going strong right now. Yes. In last place. Really? I was a little surprised by that. Yeah, it's an interesting choice for sure. I yeah. can understand why you'd be surprised. Chapter five has some visually stunning areas. It does. On the map, uh, you know, all those biomes. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and the gameplay is fast paced as ever. Yes. Very fast. But the article argues that some of the recent gameplay changes just haven't landed okay. well with players. And what about the story? I feel like they're constantly cycling through villains. Mm -hmm. Like the society, Greek gods, wasteland warriors, even Dr. Doom. Yeah, it's a lot. Like it's hard to keep track. It is a lot to keep track of. And I think that's one of the criticisms that the article raises is the... that the storyline feels a bit disjointed okay. and not as integrated into the gameplay well, as right. in some of the previous chapters. Yeah. It's like they're throwing a lot of ideas at the wall and seeing what sticks, but nothing's really sticking. Right. You know? Yeah. So maybe chapter five is still trying to find its footing. I think so. Even the most legendary games have their growing pains. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Every chapter has its strengths and weaknesses. Okay. So let's move on yes. to chapter three. Okay. Which they ranked just above chapter five. All right. This one ran from December 2021 to December 2022. And it introduced some massive changes to the way we play. Like sliding. Sliding, splinting. Bridging. Yeah. I remember... Feeling like I had to relearn how to play the game. Right. It was a whole new ball game. And this is also when they added zero build mode. Huge. Which opened up the game to a whole new audience. Absolutely. Like all my friends who said they would never play Fortnite. Yeah. They were like, okay, yeah. I'll try it now. Yeah. Zero build was a genius move, honestly. It really was. But even with all those additions, yeah. the gamers still felt like Chapter 3 was kind of a mixed bag. Okay. They argue that the big war between the loopers. Us, the players. Yes, us, yeah. and the imagined order. Yeah. Had a lot of potential, but ended up feeling kind of rushed. Yeah, and then there was that fracture finale. Oh, the fracture finale. It just didn't really live up to the hype. It was underwhelming. Yeah. And I think a lot of players would agree. It's like they set the bar so high with previous events that it, it was just tough to match that level of spectacle. Yeah, the curse of high expectations. Exactly. So we've got Chapter 5 kind of struggling to find its narrative. Mm -hmm. And Chapter 3 didn't really stick the landing. Yeah. What about Chapter 4? Chapter 4, well, that one wrapped up recently. Yeah. yeah. December 2022 to November 2023. Okay. 
And this chapter was a visual treat. It was. Thanks to Unreal Engine 5.1. Oh, yeah. It was so pretty. It just looks so crisp and detailed. Yes. And then they introduced augments. Oh, yeah, the augments. Which gave players the ability to really customize their play style. Remember the one that let you redeploy your glider? Oh, yeah. After taking fall damage? Game changer. Total game changer. Nice game changer. And the one that gave you those super-powered leaps. Yes! I felt like a superhero. Kind of bouncing around the map. Bouncing all over the place. It was so fun. Um, But even with the visual upgrades right. and innovative mechanics, yeah. the gamer felt like it was too short-lived. Only four seasons yeah. didn't give players enough time to really connect with the map. That's true. I feel like they were just getting warmed up. Yeah. And then boom, next chapter. On to the next one. Yeah. They also point out that the storyline felt a bit like a side quest. Okay. This time around. Interesting. Some major characters disappeared. Okay. And overall, it lacked the narrative punch of previous chapters. So it sounds like chapter four had a lot of potential, but maybe needed a little bit more time. A little bit more time to bake. Yeah. To fully realize that potential. Okay, so before we get into, like, the top three. Yes. We have to talk about season OG. Oh, season OG, yes. Which is a little bit different. A blast from the past. Yes. This wasn't a full chapter. Right. Just a one-month special event. Okay. In late 2023 that brought back the original chapter one map. The OG map. The nostalgia. Nostalgia overload. I logged in and it felt like I was back in high school with my friends. Right. Just playing the game for the first time. It was such a smart move. It was. By Epic Games to really tap into that feeling of nostalgia. Did you feel that too? Absolutely. Okay, good. I wasn't the only one. I was right there with you. Awesome. But they didn't just rehash the old map. Okay. They added a time travel twist to explain some of the subtle differences. Okay. Which was really clever. Yeah. It kept things fresh. So what did the gamer think about this trip down memory lane? Well... Was it a victory lap or a missed opportunity? I think it was a bit of both. Okay. They loved the return to the OG map. Of course, who doesn't? Right. <sighs> but they felt like the storyline was a little rushed. Okay. And the Big Bang finale event got mixed reactions from players. Yeah, I remember some players being disappointed that the old map wasn't around longer. They yeah. wanted more time to just, like, explore it again. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's like sometimes revisiting the past can be bittersweet. It can be. But it definitely sparked a lot of conversation. It did. And debate within the community. So we've covered the bottom half of the list. Yes. Including that little season OG detour. Yes. Are you ready to uncover the top three chapters? I am. The best of the best, according to the gamer. The ones that really defined Fortnite? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. I'm on the edge of my seat. Let's see if they align with our own Fortnite journeys. Yes, our own journeys. That's right. Okay. Okay, so we've spent some time talking about the chapters that the gamer felt like fell a little bit short. Yeah, like the underdogs. But now, yes. it's time to climb the ranks. Okay, I'm ready. And explore the eras yes. that really define yes. Fortnite's legacy. The chapters that had us like glued to our screens, mm -hmm. strategizing with our friends, and maybe even pulling off a victory dance or two. Oh, for sure. Yes, I'm ready to relive the glory days. Let's do it. Let's start with a chapter that holds a special place okay. in many players' hearts. Okay. Chapter one. Oh, chapter one. Okay. But here's the interesting thing. The gamer actually split chapter one into two parts. Really? For their ranking. Okay, I'm very curious. Why the split? I think they recognize that chapter one yeah. spans such a significant period of time. Yeah, it was a long time ago. And the game evolves so drastically within those early years. Right, yeah. So first up in the number three spot, okay, we have chapter one, season six through X. Okay. This is the era right before that iconic black hole event. Oh, yeah. That shook the Fortnite world. It did. It was crazy. To its core. So this was the time of like, giant robots and floating cubes yeah. and a map that was just getting crazier and crazier by the week. It felt like every week there was something new. Right. I could barely keep up, but it was so exciting. And that's exactly what the gamer loved about this period. Okay. They praised the sheer amount of content. Okay. The groundbreaking events like the unvaulting mm -hmm. where players got to vote on which weapon would return. Oh, that was fun. The final showdown, a massive battle between a giant robot and a monster. I remember that. It was insane. And of course, the end. Oh, yes. The event that led into chapter two. It blew everyone's mind. And left everyone wondering what would happen next. I remember watching the black hole 
consume the entire map yes. with my friends. That's a stroke of genius. We were just speechless. Um, Epic Games. Like, what is Look, happening? Those events were more than just matches. They yeah, were experiences. They, they were? And the article highlights yeah. how those events kept players engaged and constantly guessing. Yeah. It was a wild, chaotic ride. It was. But it felt like anything was possible in Fortnite. Yeah, like so much energy, so much change. Right. Definitely peak Fortnite for those who love a little bit of mayhem and unpredictability. Exactly. Okay. So now let's travel back even further to the roots of it all. Okay. Landing in the number two spot okay. is chapter one, seasons zero through five. Right. The OG of OGs. Okay. This is where it all began. Yes. The era of Tilted Towers. Yes. The simpler map. I meant the time when Take the L and the Floss Dance were all the rage. Oh, I remember that this is the Fortnite that stole my heart. Yeah, those early days. Just figuring out the building mechanics. Right. Mastering those perfect shots. Mm -hmm. Exploring the map. It felt like a whole new world was opening up. And the article nailed it when they talk about the nostalgia factor yes. of this chapter. It really was more than a game. It was. It was like a cultural phenomenon. It was. It brought people together, sparked countless memes, mm -hmm. and it even found its way into like classrooms and conversations everywhere. It really did. It was amazing. And even though the gameplay was simpler back then. Simpler times. It laid the foundation for everything that came after. Right. It's incredible to think how much Fortnite has evolved. Mm-hmm but it still retains that core essence. Absolutely. That made it so captivating. It's a testament to the game's solid foundation. Yeah. And the article also points out the arrival of the visitor oh, yeah. during this era, yeah. which was like the very beginning of the storyline. I remember seeing that rocket launch and being like, wait, there's a story here. Tell me more. Right. I need to know more. It's so fascinating to see how these small seeds of a narrative eventually blossomed into this, like, complex lore that we have today it's like watching the origin story of a superhero universe unfold exactly it's so cool okay so well-deserved second place finish agreed for the chapter that started it all yes the one that introduced millions of players to the yeah, world of Fortnite. for sure okay but now the moment we've all been waiting for yes the chapter that the gamer crowned as the absolute best the best of the best hit me with it which chapter earned the top spot? Drum roll, please. It's chapter two, seasons five through eight. Okay, interesting. This era, spanning from December 2020 to December 2021, okay. is what the gamer considers peak Fortnite. I'm very curious to hear what made this chapter stand out. Yeah. Was it the map? Was it the events, the gameplay? I think it was a combination of all of those things. Oh. They argue that this period struck the perfect balance oh, between gameplay. Okay and storyline right it was a blast to play okay but it also had those major events like the zero crisis finale yes where we saw agent jonesy travel through realities to save the zero point oh my gosh yeah. operation skyfire where we teamed up to infiltrate the mothership i remember that it was so cool and that epic end of chapter event that was a visual spectacle yeah. unlike anything we'd seen before. Those events felt like interactive movies. They did. I was so immersed in the story. Yeah. Like I was part of something much bigger than myself. Exactly. And it was during this chapter that the lore truly took center stage. Okay. We met the foundation okay. voiced by none other than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, that's right. Learned more about the Imagine Order's sinister plans. Okay. And witnessed the rise of the Cube Queen. So much was happening. It was like Fortnite's own version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with all these different factions and storylines colliding. So it sounds like this chapter had it all amazing gameplay, a gripping story mm -hmm. that kept you invested, and those incredible events that pushed the boundaries of what a live service game could be. For sure, and let's not forget the alien invasion. Oh yeah, the aliens. Chapter two, seasons five through eight, yeah. was firing on all cylinders. Okay. And it's no wonder the gamer considers this to be peak Fortnite. Yeah. They even set it perfectly. Okay. Chapter two, second half was peak Fortnite, balancing out its great gameplay and ongoing storyline and ending with its best chapter finale to date. Wow, you can't really argue with that. You can. Okay, I need a moment to process all of this. Yeah. We've gone from the nostalgic simplicity of the early chapters mm -hmm. to this polished, action-packed, and lore-heavy experience. That's quite a journey. Of chapter two's second half. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see how Fortnite has evolved. Yeah. But it still manages to capture that feeling of pure fun and excitement. Right. That drew us all in from the start.
That's the magic of Fortnite. It is. It's a testament to the developer's ability to adapt, innovate, and listen to the community. Right. They've managed to create a game that constantly reinvents itself while staying true to its core identity. So after this incredible journey through Fortnite's history, the big question remains, where does the game go from here? Right. What does the future hold for this ever-evolving world? I'm excited to see what they do next. It's <laughs> fine for right, right. We started with a simple battle royale game, mm -hmm. and now we've got this massive universe yeah. with storylines that rival some of the biggest franchises out there. And what I find so fascinating is how this ranking from the gamer yeah. reflects not just the changes within Fortnite itself, right. but also the evolution of what we as gamers find engaging. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like a mirror to the changing landscape of gaming as a whole. Right. Early on, it was all about mastering those building mechanics. Yeah. Dropping into tilted towers and maybe like pulling off some crazy trick shot. Right. But as the game has matured. Yeah. So have our expectations as players. Absolutely. We want more than just gameplay now. Yeah. We want a world we can get lost in, mm -hmm. characters we can connect with, For sure. and stories that just keep us on the edge of our seats. Exactly. And Epic Games was smart enough to listen to those evolving desires. They really were. They transformed Fortnite from a battle royale game into a platform for storytelling. Yeah. For virtual concerts with superstar artists. I know, it's crazy. For collaborations that would have seemed impossible just a few years ago. Right. It's like they've created this virtual world that constantly surprises and delights us. So after exploring all these chapters, from that OG map mm. to the cinematic spectacle of chapter two's second half. Yeah. The big question is. Yeah. Where do they go from here? Where does Fortnite go from here? What's next for this ever evolving world? Well, Chapter 5 is still unfolding. It is. And it's clear they're experimenting with yeah. new ideas. They are always trying new things. So maybe they'll lean even further into the narrative. Okay. And like weave together an even more intricate and interconnected storyline. That would be cool. Right? Or perhaps yeah. they'll introduce entirely new game modes. Oh, interesting. You know, expand beyond the Battle Royale format and surprise us with something okay. completely unexpected. Like imagine a Fortnite RPG Ooh. where you create your own character, Okay. you level up your skills, yeah. and you embark on quests throughout the Fortnite universe. I love that. Or maybe like a detective mode. Oh, that's a good one. Where you have to solve mysteries okay. <laughs> and uncover secrets hidden within the map. That would be so cool. The possibilities are really endless. They really are. And that's what makes Fortnite so exciting. Yes. It's this constant evolution. It's a blank canvas where Epic Games can paint whatever they imagine. It is. And we, the players, get to be a part of that journey. That's so true. So for all you Fortnite fanatics out there, yeah. what do you think the future holds? More focus on story. Mm -hmm. More innovative gameplay mechanics. Yeah. A return to the simpler days of the OG map, maybe with a few twists. Ooh, I like that. Let us know your thoughts. Yes, tell us what you think. And in the meantime, be sure to check out the full article. Yes. On thegamer.com. It's a great. For a more in-depth look at each chapter. For anyone who wants to really relive yeah. the evolution. The evolution of this iconic game. Yes. It's been a wild ride through Fortnite's history. But one thing's for sure. Yeah. This game is always full of surprises. Always. Until next time, keep on gaming, mm. keep on exploring, mm. and keep on diving deep into the worlds that fascinate you. And remember... In the this. world of Fortnite, yeah. anything is possible. Wow, some good stuff there. Well, wrapping it up, one thing that uh, I don't really usually like is the new chapter in Fortnite. Yeah, when it drops, I'm just comfortable doing the normal Fortnite, playing it, and as soon as I get super comfortable, they change the dang thing. I know, I know, but eventually I end up liking it most of the time. One other thing that concerns me is Disney's involvement in Fortnite. Yeah, they own 10% of Fortnite. How's that going to influence Fortnite? Probably not good. They want to make money. They have high park prices. They charge for everything. They've got a few woke policies. I don't know. I'm a little bit concerned when you start seeing that, but I'm just here to play the game. I'm not here to goof around or get involved in politics. What do you think? And also, do you want me to post more gaming content on here i hate to record myself and start playing it's actually a little embarrassing but let me know in the comments what do you think give me your two cents thanks for watching